Welcome back. For the second half of the lecture here, I want to focus on one final uh, conversation that we have about the different sources of energy and how we decide which is the best for our current um, situation. And particularly right now, I want to focus on the idea of energy can come from something that you burn. Um, so if you were to take a lump of coal and burn it, you can get that energy out of the coal. Or if you take a block of wood and you burn it, you can get that energy out of the wood. Um, the property that we care the most about right now is something called energy density. So energy density can be measured in two different ways. The most common example that we'll talk about is specific energy. If you remember back a couple units, um, one of the properties that we refer to different substance with was specific heat. It was the amount of energy per kilogram, number of joules per kilogram to raise something by one Kelvin. Um, here, specific energy is the energy per unit mass, is joules per kilogram. So the thing that's the same here is specific means the amount per kilogram. The way we define specific energy or calculate it is the energy divided by the mass. Another way that you can figure out how dense something is with energy is using energy density. That is the energy per unit volume. So just like density is mass per volume, energy density is energy per volume or joules per cubic meter, energy divided by the volume. Now, most of these will sit around the same amount, kind of that um, 46, 25, somewhere in that range. Um, but some sources of energy, like uranium, are incredibly dense with energy um, per kilogram or per cubic meter. So if we were to put all of these on a table, this is what that looks like. So specific energy, megajoules per kilogram, um, are shown here, and energy density, megajoules per cubic meter, are shown here. Mega, just remember, is a million. So a megajoule is a million joules. 54 megajoules of energy is 54 million joules of energy. That means that this is 83 million million joules uh, when we're talking about uranium. So we don't really burn uranium in the same way that we burn these other ones. So let's take uranium off our list for the time being when we're discussing this and focus on things like natural gas versus coal versus wood. Notice that coal has a specific energy that is about twice that of wood. Um, we could get energy by burning wood. That would work out just as well as coal. But there is an important feature here that is an, uh, an important thing to understand. Something that's energy dense is a better investment if you are trying to create the energy. Uh, I would like you to predict why. So think to yourself, why would energy density be important here? So there are a variety of different things that you might say for this. In particular, this comes down to two main ideas. Number one is that higher density lowers the transportation cost. So if it is more energy dense, you need less of it to get the same amount of energy. So you don't need as much coal to create X amount of energy as you would wood. Uh, so just bringing the wood from one place to another is going to be expensive. Uh, another factor is storage costs. Uh, if you need to store all of this on site, uh, you would need twice as much space to store that wood as you would the coal because it is not as dense in that energy. Now, when we talk about energy and talk about electricity, electricity is typically talked about in watts. You don't say my light bulb is using this many joules of energy. Instead, you say it's a 60 watt light bulb. Um, and we've discussed the relationship between these before. These quantities are related because one watt is just a joule per second. So if I said that my light bulb is 60 watts, it means that I am using 60 joules of energy every second. So if I was trying to figure out how many joules of energy I use in a minute, just multiply that by 60. These are 60 seconds in a minute. You'd find that it's 3,600 joules every minute. If we try to calculate the energy density and use this to talk about power plants, we can actually figure out how much of a substance would be needed to produce the power that we want. So for example, if I wanted to know how much coal must be supplied per day 
to run a 500 megawatt power plant at 30% efficiency, uh, given the specific energy of coal, we can do that. Now, 500 megawatts at 30% efficiency, this 500 megawatts actually refers to the amount of energy that is produced by the power plant. That means that in order to get 500 megawatts out, you need to put in a significantly higher amount of power. So energy in times that 0.3, 30% efficient, will give you that 500, which means what we're talking about in terms of coal that's required is we need 1,700 or 1,700 megajoules of coal every second. That's a lot of coal. Um, notice here, I didn't have to necessarily convert that into joules or convert this into watts. Um, I can go straight from megawatts to megajoules, and that's just fine. So if I know this many megajoules are required every second, and I know the specific energy of coal, I can convert that into a mass, how many kilograms. So I take that 17,000 or 1,700, 1,700 megajoules per second, and then multiply by the conversion factor, knowing that coal can produce 32 megajoules for every one kilogram. So I'm going to set that up so that megajoules would cancel out. And I end up with 53.1 kilograms a second. Now, that doesn't feel necessarily like a ton. That's a pretty small number. So let's, let's think about what that means per day. 53.1 kilograms every second would translate to over four and a half million kilograms every day of coal that's required to produce this amount of power continuously for that day. Now, this relates to about 3,000 loads uh, or car, train cars of coal per day. That's a significant amount. Um, so when we talk about coal, and we will quite a bit in our fossil fuels um, lesson, know that one of the biggest expenses for coal is just transporting it from one place to another. That it is twice as dense in energy as wood, but it still requires a lot of the substance to be able to, be able to produce the energy that we actually need. If we look instead at something that is far more energy dense, let's look at uranium. Uranium has an energy density of 83 million megajoules per kilogram. So let's say we're talking about the same power output for our particular power plant, and we want this power plant to produce 500 megawatts a second. So working backwards, if it's 30% efficient, means I need an energy in of 1,700 megajoules a second. Now, if I take this as my conversion factor, I can figure out what that means in terms of kilograms. So I'm dividing by 83 million. You already know that this is going to be a lot smaller. So kilograms per second, we're talking 0. 0.00002 kilograms a second. Now that feels like a really tiny number. So let's scale that up a little bit so we have a better understanding of what that means on a larger time scale. So that many kilograms a second means is 1.77 kilograms per day or something like 646 kilograms a year. Let's uh, for a second compare that back to what we had for coal. Coal was over four and a half million kilograms per day versus uranium is less than 700 kilograms every year. Uh, now, this is not apples to apples. Transporting uranium is a totally different animal than transporting coal, but it is an important thing to talk about that we do not need nearly as much uranium in order to produce the same amount of energy that coal requires many, many tons um, worth of that energy. So when we talk about which energy source is the best, energy density is one of the factors that's important. But as we talk about nuclear power later on, there are a whole host of issues that nuclear power has that coal doesn't necessarily have. And there's a whole bunch of other issues that coal has that nuclear power or other sources of energy don't have. So stay tuned. We will get into the nitty gritty on all of this uh, later on.